Right. <laughs> Okay, so this once again, these questions are for the Michigan Music Education Association. Sure. MMEA. Mm -hmm. For those of you keeping track along at home. Those you keeping track. <laughs> it, it is the Music Practice Podcast. And from what I've heard from John, he wants, it's a music education organization, but he's really interested too in like uh, just the practice of music. Sure. So, first question is this <clears throat> As of today, it starts with a statement. As of today, music education in public schools serves roughly 20% of the total population of students. What can we do to get that number to 100%? Well, I mean, that's a great question. Um, and I guess the question I would follow that up with is that why does it need to be 100%? Or what's the what you know what's the intent yeah. behind it being 100 percent? because everybody everybody likes different things you know and like some people are going to be art people and some people are going to be sports people and all that sort of fun stuff so i guess if the intent is for it to be 100 percent, it would be to deeply consider what all the different avenues of being involved in music are exactly, exactly. and how do you address all of those things like how do we make people better consumers and listeners of music or not even better but just how do we make music more intrinsic in their life um and try and show them ways to to understand what's happening you know kind of like music appreciation but maybe a little more i don't know right. holistic i guess if that's a good way to look at it yeah um uh and then another big way i think that a lot of music educators are doing already which is awesome is to think beyond band and choir, right? Like, you know, it, it seemed for a long time, like everything we were doing, we're in service of either shoveling people into, into band or shoveling people into choir, into these large group ensemble experiences that to be honest, you know, how many people when they graduate are gonna be in that situation again? Yeah. And even know how to interact in any situation but that where you know the band director is handing you a piece and showing you how to do it and all that sort of stuff like they can't how do they how do they manage on their own when they're out and a lot of them don't you know so it seemed like for a long time that's what we were doing but now i feel like music teachers that i've observed anyway um are doing more to sort of address things like songwriting um music production you know all these things that people do and can be active in musically once they're out of school you know that that are probably more likely for people to be involved in in their adult life you know how many people record music in their house you know compared to how many people play in a, a community band right like or yeah. who's in a jam band in their garage or whatever you know just trying to find venues to um what's the right word I'm, I'm not sure exactly but trying to find venues for people to express their relationship with music in a way that fits them the best i guess yeah. um so yeah I, I think that's that's a, probably a healthy way to go with those kind of things yeah and uh, um i think the question he, he just typed this question out quickly today and as you were answering, you're, you're beginning of the answer. I was thinking uh, that 20% number, I'm not, what I would say is uh, some schools don't, are not able to have music. Like, so what percentage of schools have no music program? Right. So no, nobody in that school has the option, you know, to, to, to try it. Right. And there's people, kids would be interested in different things, but I guess it'd be cool to like get that into more schools. Cause I've, I've like, I went to your school in Heartland. I couldn't believe the amazing uh, instruments and in room you had, it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Ann Arbor too. And yeah. then I've, I've been to other locations that are just in between and very near with no music program. Yeah. So it's just, it's just really strange that it's, that's the difference. I've, I've experienced that on even like a, like a microcosm level where I, when I taught in Ferndale um, and they've changed their system quite a bit since I was there. So I don't know what it's like now, but, but before they had, I think, five or six elementary schools, and I taught at four of them um, as a traveling teacher. And it would go like in one district, I would go from one building that had everything, you know, like I had a full suite of wharf instruments and I had, 
you know, all the things that you would want to have in an elementary music classroom in the year 2000 mm -hmm. um, to a school where I literally had like a cart with, yeah. you know, maybe like a bin full of handheld instruments, half of which were broken, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and, and not a lot of resources really to work with all within the same, same school district, just different buildings and in different areas in Ferndale and Royal Oak. Um, and it was really, yeah, it was really hard. Like it, it made it challenging to try and provide an experience for everybody that worked in all these different buildings. And it, yeah. you know, I, I think it was somewhat successful, maybe somewhat not as successful. It's hard to say really, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's wild. You know, some schools where there's nothing and you have no music at all. Right. Yeah. I, your, your matching of like the other classes, like uh, songwriting, mm -hmm. um, I, I think of, my interest in music has led me to so many different things. It, you get into technology heavy. You have to, if you want to record mm -hmm. and, and also into just stagecraft uh, performance, yeah. thinking about yourself on stage, uh, a, a video mm -hmm. kind of ties into it. Like we're doing right now. Yeah. And so like if a student had the option to do a band, you know, have to learn an instrument and, and play, you know, I don't know what they'd be playing, but maybe not the music they're listening to probably mm -hmm. or do something where they can record their own music you know both are awesome tools to learn and mm -hmm. uh, you know what would you pick you know i i definitely want to do the recording or songwriting that'd be cool oh yeah yeah i mean it's, it's there's so many things that like i one of the things i tried to express to my students when i taught in harland was how much is available to them for free now yep. but, like was mind-boggling when i was their age you know and to be the old man you know like you kids don't know how good you got it but it's like you know, it's like you guys can you can download stuff for free that let you record, and yep. you can have synthesizers, and you can have like all the stuff is just out there, and yep. you can have it for nothing. Um, holy cow! Like, yeah. take advantage of that. Go. <laughs>